In this unit we're going to take a look at the creation of callouts in Revit. So let's start off by discussing what a callout is. A callout is where you take a portion of your design and you look at it in detail, often on a separate view, often at an increased scale where you want to better explain exactly what's happening. So for example, we've got a section view here. So this could be a general arrangement section view but we may wish to look at the detail here where this door sits in the wall and how that actually works. So that would be a good case for creating a callout. So a callout consists of uh, a graphical symbol to show us what that callout consists of. So a sort of boundary around there, a little leader which attaches to a reference bubble to tell us where to find that particular detail and then a separate view which is the call out view which is that, that actual area shown at a greater scale and here we could add some annotation we could add a lot more detail and show exactly how these components come together so that example there was with a section but the same thing could also work in plan so we might want to look for example how the corner of the wall works there might be some specific details here maybe some structural wind posts so we could do a call out here so we put a boundary around there with a little reference bubble telling us where to find that drawing and it would have a corresponding call out view which we could change the scale of uh, and then add our detail and our annotations So let's go ahead and create a couple of callouts and see how the process works. So I'm going to work with this section view, section one. So I've got that active here. To create a callout, I go to the view menu and on the create panel, we've got callout there. If we have a look at the little drop down, we've got a basic rectangular callout and we can also sketch a callout. I'm gonna show you that at the end of this unit, how that works so we can create a regular shaped callout as well. But for now, let's just stick with a rectangular callout. Select callout, and now we just need to click two opposite corners to create the callout boundary. So I'm going to create a callout around the junction between this door and the wall. So click once there, and I'll do this slowly. You can see as I move down, it's defining the boundary of the callout. So set and click, and that's it. Now, if you look over in the project browser, section one is still highlighted in bold there because that's the active view we're working in. The callout view has been created separately there, section one hyphen callout one. It's been grouped in the same group as its parent view, if you like. Um, in with the section one. So if I double click on section one callout, there is the separate callout view that's been created. Let's just go back to the section for a second. If I select the callout, I've got a number of grips on here. I'll show you how all those work in a second, but just to let you know, you can adjust the boundary and the position of the reference bubble after you've created it. So let's go ahead and create another callout just to run through that again. This time I'll do it in plan. So switch to GA plan. Let's create a callout to look at the detail of the window jam and how it meets the wall. So remember view, callout, two clicks to define the boundary and GA plan hyphen callout one has been created. And again, that's been grouped in with the view in which the boundary was defined. Once you've created your callouts, you can go back and retrospectively edit and adjust them as you need to. So here's the callout we created in our section. So if I hover over the callout and select it, number of grips appear so the reference bubble itself can be positioned where you need it to be and you simply 
click and hold on the grip next to the bubble, drag it round, and you can see the leader follows accordingly. If you click and move the grip halfway along the leader, you can add an elbow in, so you can sort of crank the reference bubble away from the, the boundary of the call out. And then you've got four grips, one on each side of the call out boundary itself, so you can adjust the size there. Now, the boundary shown here does correspond exactly to this boundary here. So you can work in either view. So for example, if I get this grip, pull this really close to the top of the window and then go back to section one, you can see that the boundary is adjusted there. Likewise, you can adjust it here and as you may expect, the crop region has adjusted to match that accordingly. Now the callout view is an independent view, and as such, you can change any of the view specific attributes down here on the view control bar, including its scale. So if you want this particular callout to be, at, let's say one to five, just select one to five from the view control bar down here, and you can see the scale has changed in terms of the um, drafting hatch patterns that have been filled in over the brickwork and the blockwork. So you can set the scale as you need and any of these other view specific controls there can be adjusted. In the earlier units on elevations and sections, we saw how the reference heads or reference bubbles were filled in automatically by Revit once the plan sections and the corresponding elevation section views were placed onto sheets. It's exactly the same principle with callouts. This will be filled in for you once you have dropped or placed your views onto sheets. Just show you how that works. So. Let's drop the plan onto this sheet. Let's also put the section onto that sheet as well. Now if we go to another blank sheet and let's place a call out on here and we'll place the other section call out on there as well. You can see those two call outs at uh, greatly differing scales they're both on there view number one and view number two the name of the view it's pulling from the project browser that's placed on the view title bar i'll show you later on in the course exactly how to control what information is displayed here so if we go back to our first sheet a103 we can now see the call out reference has been filled in so if you want to see how that detail works, you need to look at view number one on sheet A104. Likewise with the section, that particular detail here, or that call out, is view number two on A104. And as you may expect, if you subsequently go and rename these sheets, or even take these views off this particular sheet and decide they need to go on a different sheet, those references will be updated in real time as soon as you do so. So far we've just created rectangular callouts but we can actually create callouts of any shape. Uh, we need to do so by sketching the callout boundary. I'm going to do that now. So you may recall from earlier in the unit there was a little drop down there and the option to sketch. So that's what we're going to do. So View menu, create panel and sketch. Cancel that out of the way. We go into sketch mode. You'll recall this from earlier units. You'll recall the green tick and the red cross. That tells us we're in sketch mode. There's the draw palette. And we simply draw out using any of these tools that are appropriate the shape of the boundary that we want for our call out. So Let's say we want a call out which looks at the junction between this internal wall and the external wall. We might want to do something along those lines like that. So there is the boundary of the call out that we feel is appropriate for the detail we want to look at. Simply hit the green tick 
to create the call out based on that sketch and you can see Revit has still rounded the corners now the, the rounding of the corners depends on the scale of the particular view so for example if I drop that down to a 1 to 20 because it's still rounded the corners but it's obviously a much smaller radius compared to the scale of the drawing so there is our call out just like the rectangular ones we can control its sides with grips we can reposition the reference head and if we flip to the call out itself there is the view with the boundary we defined and of course we can change its scale to whatever we need you can create your call outs in a variety of different view types so we've seen in plan let's do that again so working in a plan we can create a call out sections we created some there so call out and define it there elevations so if you want to do do a blow up of a particular window for example you can create a call out and the view pops up under the group name there under elevations you can also nest call outs so for example if I switch to that call out of the window I can actually define a call out in this call out so I might want to now look at specific aspects or areas of that window in detail so I can create a call out in there and you can see the call out view gets nested underneath there so it's based on that plus call out one at the end so I can now zoom right in so there's a lot of flexibility with regards where you create your call outs and how you use them to best explain your design and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.